To understand the development of rap, uh, gangster rap genre in Los Angeles in the 1980s, you've got to go back in time. Um, Los Angeles in the 1920s, I've gone back in time, right? <laughs> Los Angeles in the 1920s was a very white city. There was a very small African-American population. In fact, certain neighborhoods like uh, Watts, for example, which is famously associated in the 1960s with an African-American population, Watts, the, the annexation of Watts by the city of Los Angeles was a decision driven by the Ku Klux Klan who wanted to keep the city white. And Los Angeles in the 1920s, 1930s was really promoted as a, literally a white city. You know, get away from those cities of the North and Northeast and the Midwest, get away from Chicago, you know, come to the West Coast. It's, you know, it's, it's open, it's white here. You know, there was a lot of Latinos, but there was, and, and also um, uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese and, and Japanese immigrants, but not very many African Americans. Uh, that changes in World War II. And in World War II, you have the development of the defense industry, uh, obviously uh, war industry, production of planes in particular, and uh, obviously um, soldiers uh, are from the African American community. So what, World War II makes Los Angeles a big industrial city. So there's people there in the steel industry, they're making planes, the oil industry is big in Los Angeles, uh, the rubber industry, tires for, for planes and so forth. That becomes big and employs you know, tens of thousands of, of African Americans who come for the good jobs. Then those jobs last through the 60s. And then what happens is you have this national deindustrialization. I'll, I'll get to wrap, I promise. You get this national deindustrialization, these manufacturing jobs disappear. So there's, by the 1980s, you've got kids whose dads worked in the factories, whose grandfather worked in the factory, but those factory jobs are gone by the 1980s. So in neighborhoods like Watts and Compton, Englewood, you know, that whole South Central Los Angeles, you had a generation of African American young men by the 1980s who had like 50% unemployment. And the good jobs, the kind of union jobs, the kind of manufacturing jobs and major producers in, in aerospace and defense, those jobs have disappeared from, from the area. They've gone high tech, they've moved to the suburbs, they've just, but the kind of industrial production of aircraft and so forth and, and rubber and steel, these type of good jobs have disappeared from these neighborhoods of Los Angeles. And so there's suddenly a generation of young African-American men with literally no prospects, literally no prospects. Add into that gangs, drugs, and so forth, and you have the uh, pieces in place for the type of gangster lifestyle that then gets um, represented through the music. And so I think one of the things that happens is when we look at gangster rap, we often see it as a performance of a certain stereotype. But the early gangster rap of the mid 80s, the type of music that was circulating on cassettes in Los Angeles, being passed between people, um, that was to some extent reflecting the daily lives of young African-American men in the city. And I'm telling you this as a, you know, a white guy from the UK, but no, that's what the uh, research and analysis with an urban geography begins.